write the last chapter of this book. So it can be a book uh, that we can look at it together. We can uh, feel the pain for the people that will be lost together. Uh, and also move forward knowing that each one of us has done everything we can uh, to make it the best that it can be. And so with that, nurses have a message to everyone, starting with the public. You have heard me on behalf of the nursing community and in fact, on behalf of the healthcare community, pleading to you to stay home. We have been saying it for about three weeks. We are saying it once again, and we will say it till the end of this nightmare. Please stay home. We plead to you to stay home. Not doing so risks the families, risk communities, risk the health system from crumbling. Not doing so, it will mean the numbers will be even higher than predicted and the pain will be stronger than what we will feel. Every single life is a person. Every single life is a family member, a friend, a coworker, a healthcare professional. Every single person is important in society. For that, I also have a message to the government. There are still urgent measures that need to be made today so that those numbers can be less than otherwise. Number one, persons living in homelessness, persons living in shelters, those individuals by the crowdiness that they live in are four times of risk of contamination and four times of risk of dying. There is a plan by inner city, has been on the tables, the government is aware, RNO is ready to release a hundred nurses to serve persons living in homelessness that are COVID positive, to serve them in settings that are ready to go as soon as Dr. Williams and Minister Elliott trigger the go ahead with the legislation. This is urgent. The moment that we will have a spread in a shelter, it will be horrifying as it is already in nursing homes. With that, let me move to nursing homes. RNO has been asking for two weeks that every single person walking into a nursing home and facing residents must come and be given right away at the door two surgical masks as the Toronto teaching hospitals are doing good for them every single person needs to get this not to protect ourselves to protect residents from what we bring them from the street let's remember these are vulnerable populations and if we don't protect them we will continue to see a rate of death among the residents that can and must be prevented. I say it again, Dr. Williams, Minister Elliott, every single person walking into a nursing home must have two surgical masks now across this entire province. Families are suffering by not being able to see their loved ones. Let's make sure that these families can see their loved ones once this nightmare is over. Let's not lose more and more residents by not giving a simple mask like this to all the persons, personal support workers, nurses, others that walk into the doors of a nursing home. These masks, Premier, I spoke with you over the weekend, are very easy to produce. These are not the N95, these are not a ventilator. These are the simples of the simples. Let's ramp up our industry. We have the ingenuity and we have how, and we must do it now. 
and we must ask them to work 24 by 7, as nurses are doing, as doctors are doing. So we protect residents in nursing homes absolutely now, please. We cannot continue giving them the mask after there is an outbreak. And then watch in the news how one after another are dying in front of our eyes. I beg you, please, to now move ahead with giving the direction from Dr. Williams that every single person walking into any single nursing home, PSWs, nurses, and others, are given two surgical masks so that they can protect residents from contracting the virus and families can see these residents after this nightmare is over. With that, I want to move to my colleagues in the hospitals. They are executives, CEOs, chief nurses are doing heroic work in freeing up space in ensuring that there is sufficient space for bringing more ICU beds. And hopefully, if we are in time, bringing more ventilators. That will save lives. However, ICU beds and ventilators do not look after themselves alone. And for that, I have been asking for the last week. We have seven thousand nurses ready to help. We have 700 ICU nurses ready to come to work for you. Take them now. Do not wait till next week and the following week when the crunch will be chaos and when ICUs will be naked from human resources as it happened in Italy. We can do better because we have prepared for this RNO has the VIA nurse. Please take those resources now and put them to work. They want to help and they're ready for, to help. With that to my colleagues in nursing, and I would extend that to any other colleague in the health professions that is in the thick of it and that will be in the thick of this war, providing the care to those that will be in special sites open for shelters, for people with COVID, my colleague Lee Chapman, other places by, by, by frontline people that will be in hospitals, ICUs, others working in nursing homes, those are, that are working in home care, please know that we are here. We are here with you, by you, advocating for anything you need until we are heard. And we are here for you to provide you the support you need. For that, we have set up several systems for support, both emotional and otherwise. Go to our website, you know it well, and you also know how to reach me. Please know we are here with you. We hear you every day. We are answering every day to your call. We are here with you in heart and in mind because we know you have a tough, tough road ahead. Just know, please, that at the end of the tunnel, there is a light. This is not a pit hole that you will fall into it and not come out of it. This is a tunnel that although it looks dark today, it will if we all work together. The public, but by staying home, the government by providing the resources that are necessary despite the limitations being put today by President Trump. We in Canada can do it and together I know that we can do it because we have the human resource capacity second to none. We have the commitment second to none. We have the employers that will look after their staff and the staff that will look after patients and we that wrap our hands, cheering you up when there is a need, embracing you when there, will be a pain, when there will be pain, as it has been so far. So count on us. We are with you, for you, because together we can do it. Thank you. We will open for questions, PG.
Any questions from City News, CP24, from Olivia Woods? I think the mics, maybe you can unmute all the mics, APG, please. Okay, let's do that. Any questions? Okay, Olivia, can we unmute Olivia and mute the others then, PG? Okay, if there are no questions then, I don't think Olivia is unmuted, the PG. PG? I'm not sure. Olivia. Can you unmute Olivia PG? Unmute CP? And mute the others? Yeah, they're all unmuted. I, I don't have any questions, but thank you. Okay, Olivia. Thanks a lot. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, Eric.